We watch Roger Maris bunt, but only in practice. The league's most valuable player in 1960, Maris hit tape measure home runs along with Scourin and Mantle. He led the league in the all-important RBI department. Heading the list of New York power hitters is Roger Maris. Maris, who connected for 61 homers to break Babe Ruth's season high, will be in center field today. Roger Maris, one of the game's solid southpaw sluggers. Maris has excellent body balance and a batting style that is superbly coordinated. It is evident here when he lines a base hit to the outfield. The hands are held high, somewhere up around the letters or shoulders. It's easier going down for the low pitch, and you're always in good position for the high one. Here's a fine example of perfect coordination at impact. Roger Maris, the New York Yankee slugger, swings and misses on a high pitch that runs the count to one and one. Law comes down again, but this time Maris connects, and it's a high arching drive to right field. The ball clears the screen easily and drops into the front part of the upper deck for a home run. There was never any doubt about this drive. The Yankees are out in front one to nothing. They give Maris a happy reception. With one out in the Yankee third, Maris finds a 3-1 pitch to his liking and slugs a home run high into the right field stands. It lands in one of the front rows of the third deck. It's Rogers' second round trip for the series and reduces the Pittsburgh lead 4-2. Maris rips into a waist-high delivery and smashes a double off the right field screen, and Kubek takes third. It was another home run bid by Roger that didn't quite have enough loft. Friend, who survived only four innings in the second game, is in serious trouble once more. Vernon Law pitches for the Pirates. In the first inning, a jolting homer by Roger Maris is a gloomy reminder to the 38,000 Pittsburgh fanatics of the terrific momentum with which the Yankees entered this series, a 15-game winning streak. New York is in front by one run. With a score tied at 2-2, Maris takes a strike. And then with a count, two balls and one strike, Bob Perky prepares to pitch. Maris set at the plate. There's a long drive going to deep right field. It's going, going, it is gone. A home run for Roger Maris. His first hit of the series and 11 times at back. But it couldn't have been a bigger one as it sends the Yankees into a 3-2 lead. In the ninth frame, Berkey serves up a fat one to Roger Maris, the greatest home run hitter of all time. Roger deposits the ball in the right field bleachers for a home run, his first hit of the series. Maris's circuit cloud wraps up the game for the Yankees, 3-2. Yanks win game four on Whitey Ford's seven nothing shutout to lead three games to one in the series. Score tied 2-2, ninth inning, and if ever it was pitch measuring time, and it is right now, Joe. You better measure right. Roger Maris, who hit a record 61 homers in 1961, is up next. He takes a pitch for a strike. Then with a count two and two, Maris swings and sends a long drive going deep to right field. Philippe Ballou races back toward the fence. Ballou leaps high above the fence, gets his glove on the ball, can't hold it. The ball drops and so does Alou after his brilliant try. Richardson and Trash race home with the first runs of the series and Maris pulls up for the double. Sanford singles to right field. Davenport tries to score. Maris's throw to Barra is in time and Yogi tanks him out of the plate. Pierce takes his time with Roger Maris at bat. 
Maris rams the first pitch into right field. Trish comes on in to score, and a moment later, Mandel also tallies while Roger reaches second. In the Yankee fifth, Roger Maris steps into Pierce's curveball and slams a drive to deep right field. It's going, going, it is gone. It was the first hit off Pierce, who had retired 13 straight Yankees, and it cuts the giant lead to 3-1. to one. In the Cardinals seventh, Tim McCarver drives the ball to deep right center. And here comes Maris. And he makes a wonderful all-out reaching catch near the wall. In the sixth, Maris misses a fastball for strike two. But Maris doesn't miss this one. A towering fly to right. On the pavilion roof for a home run fair by only a foot or two. It's the first run batted in the series for Maris. But this is a big one as it sends the Yankees ahead two to one. One of the most dramatic moments in baseball history takes place, ironically enough, in the house that Ruth built, Yankee Stadium. The Yanks, with a pennant already tucked away, are playing the season's finale with the Boston Red Sox. Roger Maris is the big attraction as the handsome slugger gets his last shot at becoming the first major league player to hit more than 60 home runs. Roger blasted his 59th home run in the Yanks' 154th game. He hit his 60th four games later. Now it's the last game of the newly extended season, game number 162, and Maris's last chance. Tracy Stollard, a 24-year-old Red Sox rookie right-hander, will oppose this last Maris attempt to top Babe Ruth's immortal record of 60 home runs. And most of the 23,000 fans seem to be camped in Rogers' favorite spot, the right field stand. The Yanks at bat in the first inning is Roger Maris on deck. All season, the pressure on this 27-year-old Yankee outfielder has been terrific, but it couldn't be greater as the final curtain is raised on this dripping drama. Here comes Roger Maris. Just standing up, waiting to see if Maris is going to hit number 61. Here's the windup. Fastball hits deep to right. 